So you're telling me that there's a way to save money on my water bill while still being able to have a water source for my garden and flower beds, while also helping correct an erosion issue that I have and help out the environment a little bit? Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built my own rain barrel. What's going on everybody? Chuck here and I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. Now, if you go ahead and look at my backyard, specifically the hill going up to the house or the hill coming down from the house, however you feel like looking at it, you can see that I do have some erosion issues. You can see where the clay soil has got this wavy motion sort of going down the hill. And I also have an issue where I have a gutter that comes from the roof, obviously, that goes down and comes out through the hill, which also directs a lot of water from the roof down through there, which has also caused some problems and some erosion. Now, if you have a nice, thick, dense turf, that actually is an awesome deterrent to land erosion. However, I don't have a thick established lawn in the backyard, so I do have an erosion issue. So while not a 100% fix to my erosion problem, diverting water from the roof to another source will help to correct that area and make it a little bit easier for me to start growing grass because land that's constantly in motion makes it a little bit difficult for grass to grow, even the alpha grass that is Bermuda. So let's go over the parts that I use to build my own rain barrel. First and foremost, you need a barrel of some sort. It really doesn't matter. I've seen a wide range of barrels for this kind of project. I'm obviously using a trash can. I've seen people use old food storage containers. I've seen people use totes. It really doesn't matter. It just needs to be something that can hold water. If you have a lid, that is a plus because using the lid will give you a chance to also screen out some of the debris that may be blown around in a rainstorm or any of the stuff that's up on the roof that makes its way down to the gutter. You having a lid on top will help screen out some of that preventing clogging down at the bottom. It goes without saying, the larger the barrel, the larger the container, the more liquid you can hold. So just keep that in mind. Next up, I have perforated drain here. And this is actually going to connect up to the current uh, gutter that, or the downspout that's there, connecting into this. This will then go similar onto the lid. Not quite like that, but I have one hand here. Similar to that, now we'll feed the water down into the bucket. Next up, discharge hose. This is actually going, this end's gonna actually connect probably somewhere around here. So that way when this thing fills up with water and there's just too much water in there, it's gonna actually overflow through this hose down into the rest of the gutter uh, that currently exists. Plumber's caulk. Have my bib valve here. This is the part obviously that the water is going to come out of. This is gonna go into the uh, trash can. So last here, I just have this uh, PVC coupling and this end is actually going to um, go, uh, it's actually gonna go if this, at the wall, I'll just show you. It's actually gonna come through like this. This is gonna be for the overflow and that's just gonna help hold that pipe in. So put this in sort of like right here, that will come out and put that pipe on the end as such. You need some kind of screen or something to also help screen out things that you don't wanna go in there. So this is old. Um, uh, window screen. And so I'm just gonna put it actually on the bottom side of it. And this will also keep out anything that sort of comes through the gutter, like, uh, you know, little, the little pebbles from the shingles or, you know, anything from the gutters that may be in there that come down, you don't want to actually going into the actual basin and getting clogged. So you go ahead and you're gonna put a little screen on top to keep it nice and uh, keep the water nice and filtered or as filtered as you can. So and I'm gonna measure about three inches off the bottom. I'm eyeballing it kind of. Uh, so right about there, Got a little line with my thumbnail. And that's where I'm gonna put it. This will give me enough, if I put too close to the bottom, obviously it's gonna have a hard time. Uh, but this high up with how high I'm raising up the ground, there'll be enough clearance for me to put a watering can underneath it. Nice clean hole. Got 
clearance to turn on and off. All right, so I did go ahead and apply the plumber's caulk here just to, uh, I mean, it's not a clean job, obviously, but it's just to provide some sort of seal there, hopefully keep it a little bit watertight. We'll see. And I did go ahead up here, so this is going to be, I just did this, this is gonna be the uh, overflow, like I said. Um, I maybe could have put up a little bit taller, maybe should have put up a little bit higher, but I just put it here. So we'll just run with it. Um, also applied the plumber's caulk in there. And so slide on like that. Um, and then just, you know, go down into the drain underneath. So I'm gonna put a main hole right here in the center. Um, can't really see it, but this is like where I guess it was punched out or something. So there is a kind of a outline here. So um, I'm gonna cut that out. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna obviously drill a hole, cut a bigger hole in here. I'm actually gonna punch a few more like of the one inch holes <clears throat> with this just sort of in different spots, just to be, have a couple other areas to you know, have water drip in. But the main one where the black tube is gonna go, something like that or whatever. So the black tube is just gonna sort of lay on top like that. So turn the lid over, so I put the, the screen underneath. I taped it down so it will sit like this. Water will pour in. The screen will hopefully catch it if, you know, I may have to put more tape at some point, but um, that is quality craftsmanship right there, I know. Look at that, nice clean edges, perfect circle. You know, if you're seeing any other shape or looking any, if you've seen it looking kind of funky, adjust your screen because it's you. It's not me and it's not my quality craftsmanship. All right, so here it is in its pre-installation state. Uh, I ran out of zip ties, so I used the, you know, the bread ties or whatever that came with that to tie it down, drilled a hole in there, another one back there. My wife said, and she was absolutely correct, that these little crevices here will collect water and it will just sit. So I did drill some really small holes in there just to help, you know, drain these areas out. So nothing just sits, you know, and just collects. So now let's go ahead, take this and put it over in the backyard where it's gonna set and work on the gutter portion of this build. There she is all set up. Now I put cinder block, well not really cinder block, so I put some blocks down there to raise it up off the ground so that way when you put your watering can or whatever underneath the tap, it's, uh, you know, you have plenty of clearance from the ground, so that's why it's up so high. It's not perfectly level. I may have to come back through and touch that up. But then, as I said, then you have your overflow valve right there. That's going down into where the gutter used to go. It spills out right down there. Kind of see, put the pipe up there and I screwed it in place. And that will then, water will trickle down into the lid. This is actually really useful. You can see all the material, not all the material, but there's stuff here that either came from the gutter or it came, you know, blown from the sky like this is a leaf or whatever. But so we had a little bit of rain last night. You can see right there is the overflow and we filled it up to the overflow overnight. So there is some sediment down there. It looks probably like pollen. Yeah, that's pollen. There's pollen down there at the bottom that's from, you know, it's just that time of year, but all that nice water that we're gonna have to feed our gardens and such. I say it's a success. So that is how I built my own rain barrel. 
all told, I built this for about $70. You can actually do this for less than 20 if you have a lot of the parts lying around the house. I didn't, so I bought everything new. I probably could have gone on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something like that and found an actual container to hold the water in that was probably bigger. For cheaper, a lot of times you can find those food storage containers for like less than $5. Sometimes you can just find people giving them away for free. So you can build the rain barrel for really, really cheap if you just search for the parts and you have some, using some leftover parts you have lying around the house. It also took me about 45 minutes to build, taking it out shopping time. It's not a time consuming process and it's not an expensive process and it ends up doing a lot of good. Now here's a few things that I learned that maybe will help you out if you try to take on a project like this. First and foremost, as I said earlier, the larger the container, the more water it can hold. Now that trash can that I bought, it holds plenty, but after that first night where we had a rainstorm, it was completely full and I haven't gone less than half full since then. So obviously if I could go back, I'd get a larger container and spend a little more time searching for something to hold a little bit more water. Something else to pay attention to, pay attention to the hoses and tubes and pipes and gutter extensions and all this kind of stuff that you're using because I didn't and I bought something for a French drain so it had lots of holes and slits in it that let water sort of seep out and drip just onto the ground which isn't the end of the world. That's what I'm trying to prevent, right? I went to Home Depot with my kids. If you've ever gone to Home Depot with two small kids, they get into everything and want to buy everything, so I wasn't paying attention. I have since corrected this issue, but just pay close attention to what materials you're using. The third thing I would consider, and I am gonna end up fixing, is where the spigot goes into the actual rain barrel, solidifying that joint there, because I did use the plumber's caulk to make it watertight, but after a few uses of turning on and closing or opening and closing the spigot, it's broke, it broke that seam so water started dripping out of there. So finding a way to go ahead and make that more solid so that way there's not that give in the rubber plastic that is a trash can, that's something I'm gonna work on. It may be winter by the time I can get there because you do wanna go ahead and empty out your rain barrel when you get to the winter months, especially if you are in an area that has freezing temperatures during the winter because you'll end up breaking your rain barrel and you don't wanna do that, so you're gonna empty it out. So the next time it is empty, I'm gonna go ahead and solidify that union just a little bit. So yeah, having this rain barrel will end up saving me a little bit of money. I'm not saying it's gonna make the largest difference, but considering I do typically water my garden and my flower beds daily, they'll save me a little bit of water on my water bill every single month. Not a lot, but something. And also it depends how much water you actually have in the barrel. If you're in a really dry spell and it's empty, you have to use your city water or whatever you end up having, tapping into your well, whatever it may be. So it's not so it's not 100% foolproof, but it is better than nothing. Now, how well will this prevent future erosion? Time will tell. While I don't, it's not gonna be 100%, I think it's gonna help it quite a bit. If anything, it's gonna slow down the erosion, which will give me time to put more dirt there so I can smooth that area out a little bit and give the Bermuda a chance to fill in and grow because that is one of the main reasons why the erosion happened in the first place. There just wasn't enough turf there to keep the ground together. Now I still may have to supplement with plugs or sod or something like that. I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm just gonna have to wait and see how the Bermuda fills in with new topsoil and proper water and fertilization. That is it for this video. I hope you all found some form of value in it. This is a really cool project. I'm glad I finally pulled the trigger to go ahead and make this. I've been thinking about it for a while now, so I'm glad I just went ahead and did it. I have used it a lot. It's the only way I water my gardens and my flower beds, my hanging baskets now. Um, so it has gotten its use and it's not gone less than half full since I've uh, put it together. So it is very beneficial to have it and I think it doesn't take up a lot of space So why not go ahead and make one yourself? So thank you all for watching my videos this season last season. We'll continue to watch my videos I thank you and appreciate every single one of you. I will see you all in the next video Have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless. I Don't know why I'm doing a politician pose
nice week, everybody.